Racing is really the best way to experience vintage cars. As you become familiar with the cars, then you really get to understand what was happening in the pinnacle cars of the day. It's not like a modern race car. They need to come on power a little more gently, so you can't just mash the gas pedal. The cars are sliding, but you're very much under control. You're not braking violently. Vintage cars don't like that. They have slow rebound speeds from their shocks. The experience is, you know, kind of rhythmic. As pretty as they may look, they're really very dynamic. When you're racing, you're pushing the car to the limits. And you really get an appreciation for what the drivers before you had to contend with driving these cars. I'm Greg Witten. I was an early employee at Microsoft. Now I'm uh, chairman of the Merrick's financial software company, and I'm a car collector. I got interested in cars probably in third or fourth grade. I used to be able to remember every car on the road. Started playing with slot cars, and they were you know, brand new. You know, it was kind of a brand new toy. About the same time, the big Ferrari and Ford Wars were going on, and I used to watch racing and Formula One racing on ABC Wide World of Sports. I was interested in muscle cars and sports cars from the 60s because that's what you know I saw racing back then. In 1991, I started collecting cars. Then in 1995, I finally decided, well, I should go racing cars. <laughs> On this side of the garage, I have some of my vintage race cars. This car is known as Romulus. I bought the car out of England from Princess Nerissa of Thailand in 2007. The car was Prince Bira of Siam's 21st birthday present. Bira was the best driver in England in 1936, 37, and 38. This is a car he drove the most during that period, and he made all of the race plaques that are on the dashboard of this car, and that's just a phenomenal piece of history. When I bought this car, it was not running. This is a nut and bolt restoration. I took it to Pebble Beach in 2009, and I won first in class at Pebble Beach. It's an amazing experience. I believe I'm the fourth person to ever drive this car. This car is a, an Austin Healey. It's a 1955 100S, the first 100S delivered. It was delivered to the actor Jackie Cooper, who was a good friend of Donald Healey, and it was delivered at Sebring. This is a Lola Mark One. This car is serial number BR1. This is the first production Lola. A very quick little car, it weighs 850 pounds, but it stops quicker than most cars just because it weighs nothing. <laughs> number of modern Ferraris. Ferraris are driver's cars, so when you're driving a Ferrari, you're really engaged with your driving. They've always been an example of form and function. This is my first Ferrari. I bought this car in 1991. This is just the ultimate sports car in 1991. When I first got it, I had to drive this car, you know, kind of gently for a day before I could really get in tune with the performance level on this car. This is the car I've been the fastest in. What speed is that? On an airport runway, I did 174, and at Seattle, I did the same speed through turn one on the racetrack. I only did that a couple of times. Then I decided, well, 155 is as fast as I really need to go. <laughs> this is a 2003 Enzo. In some ways, it's quicker than the F40, the big difference is turbocharged engine, eight liters of torque in the F40, six liter engine, you know, six liters worth of torque. This one has a higher top speed, but it doesn't have all the brutal acceleration that the F40 has. This is the Ferrari that I've put the most miles on. I think I have over 8,000 miles on this car. The two blue cars, they're limited editions of the 599. The first one is the 599 GTO. 
The car next to it is another 599 Special Edition. This is an S.A. Aperta made for the 80th anniversary of Pininfarina. This car is my 1962 Ferrari GTO. The GTO is a phenomenal car. It's hot, it's hungry. If you're driving through windy, twisty roads and lugging the engine, it just feels unsettled. But as soon as you get it on cam, 4,000 RPM to 8,000 RPM, the car just comes alive. All of a sudden, it just feels like it sucks down to the road. You can just control everything that's happening with the car with the throttle. In some ways, it's a very basic car. It doesn't have soundproofing. It doesn't have creature comforts. There's no padding on the floor. The only thing is a rubber mat so your feet don't slip. It's a GT car. You can drive it on the street, street legal, but it's truly a purpose-built car for racing. In 1962, this car was the Italian hill climb champion and it won nine out of 10 races. Eduardo Waldi who was the first owner of the car. He bought it from the factory, the first GTO sold. He was a very good friend of Ferrari and probably his favorite privateer. The second owner of the car was Gianni Bulgari, one of the two brothers that founded Bulgari Jewelry. He didn't do that much racing, but he did win first in class in the 1963 Targa Florio the most complicated racetrack on the championship circuit through the hillsides and along the coast in Sicily. I look for cars that have you know, great racing history and great drivers. Cars with good race history, you know, they have a soul. And you can't get that with just a normal street car. As you collect cars from different eras, the experience is you know, sitting in the seats of champions.